Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and please, for the love of all that is good and holy, smash the ever-living boo-boo saint off of that subscribe button, because I am very tired, and I want us to keep on climbing even further beyond the 1100 ladder. So, ladies and gentlemen, as to why I'm tired, I just got done coming in top eight, second place after Swiss, if I could get my fingers in there, yeah, see, second place, <laughs> after Swiss, five rounds at my locals for their OTS championship. And I'm very happy how my deck performed, except that, uh, yeah, we, we came in second place after Swiss, and then uh, we played a guy that we 2 owed in the regular tournament, and then we lost in top eight, so we didn't get our invite. I'm very upset fucking spaghetti about that. So, you know what? It, it is what it is, man. I, I it, It's amazing, actually, how I did. Um, just to get into my matchups real quick. We, round one, we played against Naturia Runic. We went into three games, and then I won in time because I burned with Raid Raptor Napalm Dragonius. We're going to be talking about that later. Round two, everything after that until round five was just 2 0. So, round two, we went against um, Sword Soul. We 2 0'd that. We hit his Baron and uh, his Chang Ying, the one that manages to do 1200. We hit that with a Lava Golem, and he had a Blackout two imperms and something else in his background he's like wow he main decks lava golem and i'm like yeah bro i main deck lava golem so we 2 owed him round three uh we played against a cash tira mirror that we 2 owed uh and then round four we went against naturia runic again that we 2 owed uh and then round five was against of course the legendary jeremy mitchell uh who won a ycs with pendulum magicians we went into three games and uh he ended up beating me unfortunately so but Overall, I was happy with how the deck performed. I am going to be making changes for the Kissimmee Regional. Um, so, yeah, let's just go ahead and, and dive on into this because I'm very aggravated that uh, I lost in, in the top eight. So, yeah, I'm just going to gonna try and maintain my cool as I do this deck profile. So, we're playing three copies of Unicorn. Um, everybody out here talking about Copium and shit. There is nothing like the Copium that you feel in your body with your Ultra Ball, ladies and gentlemen, when you open with this card or a way to get to it because it just equals full combo. Like, yeah, if they Nibiru you, like what happened to me in top eight, game one, I got Nibiru to fucking hell and back and I hadn't been Nibiru all day. If that don't happen, this card's great. But you know what? We're, we're playing cash money. So like, we're, we're probably going to be getting Nibiru. But yeah, no, card's good. We're playing three copies of Fenrir. I want ulti so bad. Card's good. Uh, and then we're playing two copies of Rise Heart. Um, you don't want to brick on a third. I saw a build where someone was playing three Rise Heart and a Rota. I'm like, you really want to get to that Rise Heart, don't you? But I, I really don't feel like you need more than that, at least in this particular build. This build is 42 cards, and you're going to see why. Uh, if you haven't already seen the previous deck profiles. One, Tier Element, Cash Tira. Um, it's it's good. It combines well with uh, Cash Tira, Rise Heart, because, or a Rise Heart. Because uh, you can summon it, make them mill three, and they all get banished, and then that's just more materials for uh, the Arise Heart. Uh, and then we're playing the one Scareclaw because it's good and it gets around Baguska. Uh, and then we're playing one Ogre because it's a big ass beat stick, especially under Pressure Planet. And then we're playing the MVP, two copies of our secret rare, Lava Golem. So this card i gotta give a shout out to mst tv if i can get rid of this fucking glare um i gotta give a shout out to mst tv on this so i ended up taking his uh adventure build that he came in top eight with in canada and other than changing out the two dark rulers in the side deck to two lightning storms um i pretty much kept everything else the same oh well we changed something else that you'll see in a minute but this card lava golem is fucking disgusting ladies and gentlemen you need to be playing either sphere modes Lava Golems, Nibiru's in your main deck because this card is just so good. Like I mentioned with the Sword Soul player, you know, he set four to his back row. I knew one was a blackout and he's sitting with Shang Ying and uh, the Baron. And I'm just like, okay, cool, Lava Golem in game one. And he's just like, wow, this man main decks Lava Golem. And I'm like, yeah, man, like I'm, I'm going to main deck that. I ended up against the Naturia Runic player round four. He ended on uh, just a Baron. And then during my turn, he activated Naturia Blessing to summon out the Camilla. And then we just lava golem the shit out of him again. Like, this card is just amazing. And also, because of something else that we're playing, uh, you can bounce this and, and reuse it if you want to. So, yeah, we're going to we're gonna be showing that off in uh, just a second. Uh, then we're playing three copies of Ash, because Ash is just really good this format. Uh, and then we're playing what I am absolutely cutting out. We are indeed playing the Brave Engine. So... How did this perform? Um, here's the thing with Brave. 
If you open up Faithful Adventure, uh, this is just so fucking trash. Like, I was having hands where, like, I'd open up, like, Faithful and Dracoback or, like, a Griffin and a Faithful. And, like, you just can't do shit with that. Like, yes, you're playing things like Chirabini and the extra deck um, to, like, help facilitate, like, dumping the water Enchantress. Because you can make Dracosac detached to get the two tokens and make the Chirabini dump the Enchantress. And, like, in theory, they're not going to nib you because at most you're going to have a Chirabini and a Dracosac on the board so like it doesn't really make it advantageous to them to nibiru you at the same time it's like why are we even playing this engine when like you can solve like working around nibiru like other ways it did come up against sword soul when um i summoned out unicorn and i tried to activate the effect and he went imperm and then i chained the card that uh we ended up swapping out the three d shifters for the mst tv was playing i'm playing three lance now so i went lance he chained a second imperm so my unicorn still got negated but then i was able to banish water enchantress and end on griffin the token with the faithful and the draco bag but other than that all day to day i did not once end on like the most broken board with like Diabolsis, Arise Heart, Shangri-La, the token and Griffin Rider with the Draco back and then getting out a, a cash tier monster, my standby phase off Shang. Like that just never happened. If that does happen, like yeah, it's disgusting. But on top of that, the Brave Engine isn't very good because of the fact that it prohibits you from being able to lock out five zones more consistently. So, you know, because of the fact that you can't activate the effects of monsters that are normal summoned, if you use Birth as an extender, then you're locking yourself out of the Brave Engine and vice versa. If you use the Brave Engine, you're locking yourself out of that play. So it makes it harder to be able to lock out five zones. You still can in this deck. You know, you can open up like the three or four card combo, whatever it is, and do like the full nine zone lock, you know, across two turns. But the Brave Engine makes that more inconsistent because you're playing all these other cards. So this is like the main reason why it's 42 cards. On top of that, we're also playing two Book of Eclipse. But I am definitely going to be cutting this Brave Engine. It's very cool in concept. I love that it got me to a top eight. But I would not play this going into the Kissimmee Regional. I'm definitely going to swap to a pure build. Maybe play Sales Band. Maybe play Ibli in the main. Because this just does not get the job done as you would hope it to. It's very good when it works. But when it doesn't work, it's just nothing but fucking bricks. Next up. We are playing still my three misprint pressure plans. Well, technically two are misprint, two are stamped twice. One of them stamped like three fucking times. Uh, yeah, the card's $55 for a reason. It's really good. Uh, we're playing three copies of this card that's now $40 instead of $60. Um, bro, like I mentioned with the copium, uh, I don't know why the fuck people are saying that, honestly, because I think that that word is so stupid. Um, but the, the, the copium, the adrenaline rush that you feel when you open this with like a unicorn is disgusting. Um, when I was playing against, who was it? It was Jeremy Mitchell. And I opened up Theosis and Unicorn, and I go summon Unicorn, activate effect. He goes Imperm. I'm like, sure. We do our normal shenanigans. Uh, he summons out uh, Nimble Angler. I use Fenrir to try and banish it. Unicorn to banish card from his extra deck. He goes Chain Econ, Tribute the Angler to take control of your Fenrir, and I just go Chain Lance because I had already opened up the Theosis, so there was no reason for me to use my in-hand lance. Then he tried to use talents, and I had Solemn Judgment set because we had side-decked. And it, it, it got us the win, got us to game three. Uh, next up, we're playing two copies of Birth. I think I'm going to move this up to three. Uh, I know I was talking ad nauseum about how you should only be playing two because three can be a brick, but I feel like you just you want to see your cash tier cards more than you would want to see like the Brave Engine in this case. And plus two, I'm probably going to be cutting the Brave Engine. So I feel like moving this to three is going to be what I do moving forward. But I mean, th this card was disgusting. Against the Naturia Runic player round one, I had a Unicorn in my hand. I'm like, well, I need a Birth. And sure enough, I top decked a Birth. I was just able to win the ball game. People also don't fucking respect this card. Like people forget that whenever a spell card's activated, I get to banish three from their grave. So it hurts Naturia Runic because I was able to hit their Mole Cricket I was able to hit their runic spells, sacred trees, blessings. Like, I was able to hit all of that. Came up in both the Naturia runic matches. Like, the, both players forgot about this. Uh, and then we're playing, like I said, what I took out for uh, shifters, or what I took the shifters out for. Three copies of Lance. This card's disgusting. You gotta play three. I've seen some builds playing two. You gotta play three of this card. I absolutely love Lance. It's so damn good. It's not once per turn. You can use it in the damage step. It's so disgusting. Like, just playing. Lance is just so good. Uh, something else for Spice. We're playing two copies of Book of Eclipse. We side deck the third. Uh, I really liked MST TV's 
reasoning behind this. And Eclipse, it, it's it's absolutely disgusting. Against the Sword Soul player game two, he ended up bringing out the Ice Jade Synchro where it can make all monsters on their field not be able to be banished or destroyed by card effects. So I had Lightning Storm in hand. So I Lightning Stormed his back row, which was Impermanent Trap Trick. And then I just book up Eclipse the shit out of him, flip his card face down, and then I was just able to break apart his board. So yeah, it, it was just disgusting. Next up here, we are playing three copies of Pot of Prosperity. It's just an amazing extender. Like, not much else to say about it. And then one copy of Terraforming because I like playing four field spells. And then for the traps, we're playing the one Big Bang in the Preparation. Um, preparation actually never came up. Uh, like, the one time it was in my hand, it just got popped on the field. So, it, it was kind of what of. Uh, next up, we are playing for the extra deck. Two copies of Shangri Era. It's it's really good. One copy of Diabolsis. You don't need more than one. You're not going to make it going second. Like I said in my previous profile, hope to God that all of the Castiro players hit this when they go first, because then I'm just going to say thank you and make a big eye and proceed to win. Two copies of Arise Heart. This extra deck is very tight. You could make the argument that you could play a third. Um, that's just kind of like a player preference, honestly. Um, one big eye, <laughs> so against the Sword Soul player when he brought out his Ice Jade Synchro uh, from the grave, I made a big eye and took control of it, and so then I only needed another 5,000 damage on board and I was able to get it, so it was it was tasty. Uh, Dracosac never came up, like I said, you can make this with two level 7s to make the two tokens make sure Beanie to dump water enchantress, that never came up. Um, two copies of Zeus never came up. Uh, the two Lingaribos came up once because I opened up two fucking Iblis um, in my top eight matchup. So I was able to go make a Lingaribo, and then my dumbass misplayed because then he imper my unicorn. I could have attributed the fucking Lingaribo and probably won. Um, on top of that, too, because he impermed the unicorn, I had a Fenrir in hand, so I was forced to make Lingaribo and unicorn into Donner, pop the Donner and the Lingaribo, and I still fucking lost. Like, it was. Just bad plays. Like, I feel like the Imperm didn't really matter because, like, if he played it properly, it would have been negated anyway, and I still would have lost. But it was just one of those things. It's like, what the fuck ever. Cherubini, like I said, for the Brave Engine. Donner came up once. It's okay. Dark never came up. Goliath for the attached to the uh, Arise Heart. That is our extra deck for the side deck. We're playing three Iblis. Never came up. Um, I don't know how I feel about this card, honestly. Like, it, it, it seems good. I understand why the fuck it's good. Uh, it just it never came up. Uh, and then one more Lava Golem. This this is just disgusting. There's not much more to say about it. One more Eclipse, because I don't like looking... I don't like the face of other people's cards, I think, as Paz Joker said years ago. Two copies of Lightning Storm. We already talked about this. Labyrinth and Trap Tricks by extension. Both those Trap Tricks are such a hard... Or both those Trap trick, trap Decks, I can't talk today, are such hard fucking matchups for this build. Like, I fucking hate Trap Trick. I fucking hate Labyrinth. I understand that the decks are good. Don't get me wrong. I've talked about that they're good. But Jesus Christ, this particular build of Cash Tira has such a hard time dealing with with those fucking decks. Three copies of God Says No. These cards are so fucking good. Uh, and then three copies of Evenly Match. And then the amazing, of course we gotta have our token for the for the Brave Engine. We're playing how we go to time. <laughs> so, uh, in our Naturia Runic matchup in game three, I saw that there was two minutes and five seconds left on the clock and I was like, fuck it. So I quickly threw both of these in. Um, for the Arsenal Falcon, I just took out a Zeus and threw this in, and then I took out an Ash and put in the Napalm Dragonius. I brought out Unicorn and Fenrir. Fenrir searched me Rise Heart. Unicorn searched me what the fuck ever. And then I went Summon number three, because of course we're going to play around Nib. Make Arsenal Falcon. Uh, our opponent reads it, doesn't know what it does. Tell him I detach to summon a Winged Beast. He's like, that's fine. I go Effect Detach, and we slam down Napalm Dragonius on the field. Declare its effect, because when it's summoned, it does 600 burn damage, and we were under Prosperity, so we still did 300 points of damage we were in time and we won the ball game i am not taking this out of my side deck for no damn reason it's better than flare metal because with flare metal yes it's just a rank seven that you can make but like if you have like 30 seconds left on the clock and you make flare metal and pass then if the opponent has like a kaiju or something which did happen to me a couple times today um they can kaiju it uh they can book of eclipse it and then they don't take the burn damage so like there's ways that they can play around flare metal and potentially beat you with their own burn damage so i would rather just have this because i can quickly side deck it in it doesn't take but maybe five seconds to throw in this two card package if there's like 60 seconds left on the clock quickly shuffle because the odds of me getting away to get out two level sevens on the board to make arsenal and go into dragonius is very high like yeah i could potentially open up the dragonius but i mean i can just make other plays until the clock hits zero and then normal summon the dragonius and do burn damage like i'm not worried about that so guys this was my uh cash tira deck that i should have got my fucking invite with um like i said i'm definitely going to be making changes to this um 
you know, come the regional for uh, Kissimmee in March. So March 18th to be exact. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know what kind of changes you would make. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.